Okay. Okay. So I think uh, this is the uh, data visualization with our book club. And today I'll be presenting uh, chapter 10 of the book, uh, which is about uh, customizing the graph. So like for the learning objective uh, for this chapter, uh, we are going to learn how to customize uh, the, the, the graph axis, the grid lines, the colors, the fonts, the labels, and also legends. And also, we are also going to look at how to add uh, uh, annotations on the plots, how to customize uh, those annotation on the plot. So like for the axis, so for the axis of the graph, uh, we can have both X and Y axis that can either be uh, numerical or categorical. So how do we customize those graphs? For example, we are having a, uh, this section, we are having the axis uh, that is uh, quantitative. So in that case, uh, uh, we need to use scale, either scale X uh, continuous or scale uh, Y continuous. So within those scale X or, sorry, I think I want to use, share this. Uh, within those uh, scale X continuous or scale uh, Y continuous, we just need to specify uh, both the breaks, which is a, a numeric value of vector position, and also the limits. We just need to specify uh, those uh, two arguments. So we call ggplot2. Uh, we use ggplot. We are using the mice per gallon uh, data set. So we map a displacement to the x axis, highway to the y axis, then jump point. Then to customize the x axis, because the x axis uh, displacement is a continuous variable, we use the scale. We use the scale X continuous. So within, within scale X continuous, they specify the breaks, which is a sequence of number that goes from one uh, to seven. Then the by argument. So in between, they are breaking by every one. Then they specify the limits. Should be a number between that ranges uh, between one and seven. Then for they did the same thing for the Y axis. They specify the breaks which goes from 10 uh, to 45 by five, then they also specify uh, the limits, which is from 10 to 45. So if we run that, we can see that our Y, we can see that our Y axis, in our Y axis, uh, uh, we have a number that runs from 10 to 45, just as we specify in the limit, and also in the X axis, it ranges from one uh, to seven. So so, so this is how we can specify, uh, we can customize the scales in our uh, visualization. So what about uh, if we want to give numeric formats uh, for, for the scale, maybe we want to, we need, we need to ensure that we have, we have the scales package. So within the scale package, uh, we can use uh, dollar, uh, we can use comma, we can also use percent. So, so how do we do that within the scale? Here they set a random seed of one, two, three, four uh, for reproducibility. Then they have a data frame here that they created, which X axis, which is a random number that goes from 50 uh, to, to 10,000. They are breaking by every 50,000. Then Y axis should be run if, 50 by to by uh, they are breaking by zero by uh, between zero and uh, one. Then the point size, which is a random number that goes from uh, 50 uh, to to 1,000 by by 1,000. So they call uh, ggplot2. They did the mapping here. Then they specify the size should be equals to uh, to the point size. Then uh, they use uh, the job points, which is for scatter plot. Then color should be cornflower blue. Then alpha to customize for transparency, which is 0.6. Then they have scale X continuous. So within scale X continuous, they say the label should be scales, comma, which is going to put a comma in the X axis, which will be 
zero fifty thousand one hundred thousand one fifty thousand and two hundred thousand then for the y-axis they are still using scale y continuous uh the label they are using scales uh they are calling the percent within the namespace percent so it's going to put uh it's going to put uh the this is going to ensure that this is this represents a percentage uh, because um, and for the scale size, uh, the, the size, they specify the range, it should go from between one and 10, then the label, they're using scale, uh, scale, scale dollar. So it's going to put, it's going to put a dollar uh, symbol uh, within that legend. So so the code, so this uh, this code, once we execute it in our studio, uh, we are going to get uh, this uh, visualization. Okay, so so alternatively, we can also use scales. We can also use uh, for for the for the heroes uh, heroes format. So we can say dollar format. Then prefix we using string. Then we specify the suffix. Uh, uh, they are using uh, the forward slash use two zero ac, which is going to put uh, the the hero symbol, uh, which is going to put the hero symbol. Maybe in case we are we need uh, to put the hero symbol on the visualization. So also they also talk about uh, what about uh, if we are working with values that are not continuous, maybe they are categorical variable, which is for discrete value. Then in that case, we need to use either scale X discrete or scale Y discrete. So in that case, we need to specify the limits and the labels. So these are the two arguments, the limits. We need to specify the limit. We also need to specify uh, the label. So how can we do that? So we have our ggplot2 graphics here. Then we say scale X uh, discrete. So in this case, we specify the limits should be pickup, SUV, minivan, uh, mid-size, compact, subcompact, and two-seater. Then these are the labels in which uh, they pass in. These are the labels. So once we execute this, uh, ggplot2, we just render everything. It's just going to render everything. This is the count. Uh, this is the class. Uh, of uh, of the of the vehicle we are working with. I don't know if there are any comments before I proceed uh, to the date axis. How to customize uh, the date axis? Not right now. Everything looks good though. Yeah, I definitely find like okay. customizing graphs like super interesting. Yeah. So for the date axis, uh, the there, there is two uh, important uh, function in which they look at the scale X dates and also the scale Y dates to customize the Y axis dates. So in that case, there are two options in which they specify. Uh, the first is the date breaks. And this date break, they, we can pass in a string given the distance between the breaks. It can be two weeks or 10 years. Then the date labels, which is kind of, which is also a string, given the formatting uh, specification and the formatting specification is what they showed in this uh, table. So we have symbol percent D, which stands for this day as number, which can be between zero and 31, which is like example. This is an example, 0131. Uh, we have percent A, which is an abbreviated weekday, which can be like mon M O N Monday, uh, percent capital A, which is um abbreviated weekday, percent M, which is month, which can be from zero zero, which is January zero one, which uh, from zero zero uh, to one two, I think one two is going to be uh, December. 
So we, we are going to have uh, zero, zero 01 will be January, zero 02 February, in that order to, to 12. So we have percent B, which is abbreviated, abbreviated months. We also have percent capital B. This one stands for unabbreviated months. Percent Y, this one stands for two digits year and percent capital Y, this one stands for uh, four digits year. So how do we do first? We call ggplot2. In this case, we are using the, the economics. So we say X should be dates, Y should be unemployment, uh, job line, color should be dark green plus scale X dates. Then we say the dates breaks should be every five years. Then the dates level, we're using percent B hyphen percent Y. So percent Y shows that the year should be two, uh, two digits, uh, two digits year. So we are going to have Jan iPhone 70, Jan iPhone 75, Jan iPhone 1980, 1985, 1990, 1995, uh, which is going to be uh, in that order. So I think they, they attach uh, year. Uh, a cheat sheet uh, where uh, they did uh, further uh, customization. They attach here a cheat sheet uh, where they specify more uh, customization within the scale X continuous and scale Y continuous. Uh, they have the name, which is the name of the, of the scale. We can specify the breaks, one of null, for no break, then this is the default. A numeric vector of the position. We can also have minor breaks. We can also have labels. We can have limits. We can also pass a transformation on, on that axis we are working on. Then this is position. We can alter the position to be either left. We can take the position of the axis scale to either right, uh, top, or bottom. Okay, so for colors, so for colors, so for colors, so for colors, so they say the default uh, colors in ggplot2 graph are functional, but often they can be happily, uh, often we can, uh, we can uh, customize them. So uh, how do we do that? Uh, maybe we have jump points, here we say color should be blue. We can also have jumba. We can say field should be uh, still blue. Or we can also use a uh, uh, hex color code to specify the colors. So, but there are some instances in which we do not want to go uh, with the default uh, color. So in that case, we need to specify our own color. So we can do that within the scale color manual or scale field manual where we can specify our own manual color uh, to the visualization in which we are creating. So in this case, they were using the diamond data set. Uh, uh, it's a data set that contain the prices and attribute of 54,000 round cut diamonds. So the, and this data comes uh, with ggplot2. So we need to load ggplot2. Uh, we say ggplots, we pass in the data, we do our mapping. Uh, we say the geometry should be a bar. Then they say scale field manual. So the values, we specify the values should be dark red, uh, steel blue, dark green, gold, brown, purple, gray, and khaki. So when we render the plot, so we are going to have this nice, uh, uh, we are going to have this uh, nice uh, looking uh, visual. So by default, it's going to stack those bar, but if we don't want those bars to be stuck, we can further customize that using the position argument, which we can say should be dodge. So it's going to place uh, those bars uh, side by uh, side. So they also talk about color palettes, uh, that there are many uh, color palettes uh, that we have in R. So one of them is the R color prewire package. So this one is a very, a uh, col popular color palette in which uh, uh, we are all familiar with. So 
and it has uh, it has three different type of color. I think it has both uh, divergence, both continuous. Uh, this is the display of the color palettes, all the color palettes in which we can find uh, in the in the R color brewer package. So, so how do we do that? We just need to say between either scale color brewer or scale field brewer, we just need to pass in the palettes. Uh, but here they were passing the palette, they use DAC2. So it's just going to render, uh, it's, it's going to render it based on the uh, palette we specify. Then we can specify the direction for the palettes. If you say minus one, then it's going to arrange those color in a reverse uh, order. So there is also another package in which they talk about is the Viridis. Uh, is the Viridis palette is on also another popular choice, uh, which is for the continuous scale. So in that case, we can use scale fill Viridis C, which is for continuous color palettes. We can also have scale color Viridis C. This is for continuous, but for categorical, we can use scale fill Viridis D uh, or scale color Viridis D. This, this is used uh, in the customization for uh, categorical variable. So like the clarity, which is a categorical variable. So there they specify scale fill uh, Viridis D. And this is going to give us uh, this palette. So there are a lot, there are, there are a lot of uh, color palettes in which uh, they do mention there here, but among all these color palettes, I think the one in which I see uh, that is uh, very useful is this other uh, palette, which is like a summary, which is like a, a tidy models of color palettes, which is the palette, palette, palette down, which is the palette down. It's like a collection of several color palettes in which uh, they are trying to collect all the color palettes in which we have uh, in other packages. Uh, and they want to put it in this palette called uh, Paletta. It's like a collection of all the pal color palettes in which we have uh, in R and they are putting it in one package called uh, Paletta. So it's like a summary of all the color palettes in which we have. Um, they, they do discuss that for us to further go in deeper, uh, we can look at the R book, book Coke page of ggplot 2 colors. Also the color choice advice in, in the book, in this book, which we'll see in subsequent uh, uh, discussion. So here yeah, they were looking at points and lines. So how do we uh, customize uh, the points? So for the points, if we want to change the, maybe like the shape of the points, uh, in that case, within jump points, we can just say shape is equals to one. When we say shape is equals to one, it's going to give us this circle. Maybe if we say shape is equals to two, it's going to give us this. So we just need to specify that uh, within the jump points. We can also pass in aesthetics that shape should be equals to sex. So it's going to change uh, the shape of the, of the points based on the value in which we are supplying to ggplot2. So here we can have a number that range uh, from zero uh, to, to 25. So we can specify any number uh, within uh, the jump points, then it's going to change uh, the shape of those points based on the number in which uh, we pass. So for the lines, for the line, I think we need to uh, specify uh, the line type which is very useful. So the line type, it can be one. Uh, we can also map it uh, based on aesthetics. We can map it based on aesthetic to a certain value that can be found in the data. Like in this case, they say line type uh, equals to six. So, but these are the various line type. This is six. This is, if you specify five, it's ju just going to give us, us this uh, dash line. If you specify three, it's going to give us uh, this dotted line. If we specify one, 
is going to give us this thick dark line. So, so this is just uh, customizations uh, for the lines. Then if we are going over to, to the fonts, which has to do with the non uh, data link. So in that case, they were using the extra fonts uh, package, uh, which is going to install some extra font on our machine. So we call library extra fonts, then we import fonts imports to import all the fonts to our machine. Then we use fonts to see what fonts are now available, uh, to see what fonts are now available uh, in your system. So we can all apply the new fonts using text option from the team function. So we say library extra fonts. Uh, we do our ggplot2, passing the data. We do our mapping. We, we pass in the geometry, uh, the labs. Then we set team text, which is element uh, text. Size should be 16. Then family. Yeah, we, they were using Comic Sans MS as the font, uh, which, is going to, which is going to render the fonts based on the family. Uh, based on the family in which we specify, but, uh, but they do specify that if we want to learn more about fonts, uh, we can look at, uh, we can consult working with our Cairo graphic custom fonts and uh, Gigi, uh, and Gigi uh, plot two, I think uh, so, someone post, uh, Yes, yes, yes. You can change uh, the fonts of the of the text uh, by just specifying uh, the family, just passing any font family. We can also use uh, the Google fonts. We can go to the Google, uh, use any Google fonts and just pass in the family here and it's, uh, and it's going to, it's going to, render it on the graphics, which is uh, very useful. So for the for the for the legends, so in ggplot2 legends are automatically created when variable are mapped to color, field, and line type. So that means uh, for legends, they will, they will create legend for us automatically when we map variable that we can get from the data to maybe any visual properties of the graph. So it's going to render it and put uh, a legend for us. So, and the legend, we can change the location of the legend by using the legend of position and position argument. So the position can be a one of top, which is above the plot area can be right. Right of the plot area can be bottom, which is below the plot area can be left left of the plot uh, area. We can also pass a, a vector of numbers to specify where we want to put it within the plot, or we can specify none, which suppress, uh, which we're going to suppress uh, uh, the legend in our plot. So in this case, they just said within team, legend of position, they place it at the top. So it's going to put it at the top of the, of the visualization in which uh, we are working on. So for the title, for the legend title, so how do we go uh, about you? We can change the legend title through either labs function. We can use color, we can use fill, we can use size, we can use shape, uh, we can use line type and also alpha, which is going to customize uh, the transparency. Uh, for the alignment, we can say legend.align options, the theme, function which can be zero for left, uh, 0 0.5 will be center, and one is going to be is going to be right. So in this case, we have our uh, visualization, we add the team, then we say team, legend or title that align, they use 0 0.5, which is uh, going to align it uh, to the left, uh, which is going to align it uh, to the center, is going to center uh, that legend because zero is left, 0 0.5 will be center aligned, one is going to be right. So it's going to put it 
uh, the center. It's just going to put our legend at the center, which is Otomabai class. So for the legend attributes, I think the legend attributes, there are several attributes for the legend. There are several attributes in which they do discuss here. Base plot, this is the base plot, plot. Legend, we can say, look at the legend uh, background, which is a rectangle uh, here within team. It's a legend background, element rect, so which is going to specify then the color uh, should be purple. So we can see that we have purple there. Uh, the fill uh, should be pink, which is going to fill it by pink. The size is three and the line type should be dashed. So we can also have legend key, which specify uh, uh, the key for the legend. So uh, here they say element, uh, element red. So they say color should be purple, fill should be pink, size should be uh, 0 0.5, line type should be dash. So it's just going to put dash there. So they also have legend key size, which is going to be the key size of the legend. You can see here that we say unit, which is two centimeter. We can see how the legend uh, key size, it has increased. Uh, we have legend key width, which is also going to take a unit. Then we pass in a value. Then legend dot text, this customizes the text of the legend. And here they were looking at uh, uh, legend uh, dot title, which is going to customize uh, uh, Okay, yeah, you can make uh, such customization to the legend. Uh, this is legend dot uh, position. Uh, this is going to, we can say either none, uh, we can choose either uh, left, we can put right, we can also pass in a vectors of number uh, to place uh, the legend uh, where uh, we want it to be. We can also use conditions. We can legend dot position pass in a vector, and it's going to place uh, the legend uh, in that position for us. So, what about uh, dealing when we are working with labels? We are working with labels in our uh, in our plot. So, this we can customize it using the labs uh, arguments. So, within the labs. Uh, we can customize the title of the plot, uh, the subtitle, uh, the captions, the, the X axis, which is horizontal axis, the Y axis, uh, which is vertical. We can customize the color, the fill, the size, which is the size of the legend, the line type, the shape, alpha, and also the size, which is the size legend title. So. How do we do that in ggplot2? Because uh, as we, we are still using the MPG data. We do our mapping, we say color, we say shape is factor of uh, the year. Then we say the jump should be point, size is three, uh, alpha is 0. 0.5. Then we, we customize the laps this way. We pass in the title, the subtitle, the caption, uh, the X axis, which is engine displacement in liters. Uh, the Y axis, which is I weigh miles per gallon. The color is cost to car class. Then the shape is here. Then we are using uh, a minimal team. So if we pass in that, uh, we are going to have uh, this uh, visualization, which is very easy for us to communicate in such a way in which our audience, they are going to understand uh, the message in which we are trying to pass uh, across uh, to them. So what about, uh, there are some instances whereby uh, we want to add some certain text on the graph to annotate the graph. So that is also possible uh, within 
uh, ggplot2 because those texts we can use it to highlight uh, important uh, points in which we want to pass across uh, to, to our audience. So in this case, we are looking at adding text, uh, adding text to the graph. Uh, and here we have our simple plot, which is a scatter plot this way. So for us to add text to this plot, so we say jump text, then we say label, is row dot names of empty cars. So the labels is going to put all the row names of empty cars is going to put it uh, on this plot so that here we can see we have Toyota Corolla. Here we can see we can see the type of vehicles. We can see we have Ferrari Dino. So so how do we uh, overcome uh, the problem of overlapping labels in that plot. So in that case, we need to use another tool function from the GG uh, repair package, which is uh, geometext repair. Then we say label row dot names of empty cars, then size is equals uh, to three. So if we do that, uh, we can see that uh, it repairs uh, those texts and it makes it easy uh, for us uh, to read uh, those texts because before our the first one plot in which I show we can see that uh, the, the text they are overlapping each other so if we use uh, the jump text repair which function that is coming from the GG repair package we can repair uh, those texts and it will make it very easy uh, for our audience uh, to see to read the plots. So, so adding additional information. So adding additional information, we can use uh, the annotate function because we might want to add those information into at a specific point on the on the plot on the graph. So we here we say annotate, then we say text. We, we just need to specify the x and y position. Then the label is some text. Then the color color name then the size, text size. So how do we do that uh, in ggplot2? And also we can also by default centered use using either hjaws or vjaws. hjaws zero is going to be left justified, 0 0.5 center, one is going to be right center. The same thing with uh, for vjaws, we have vjaws zero is above, 0 0.5 is centered and one is going to be below. So here we are having the same plots in which I've been working on. We just add ggplot2, annotate. So annotate is text, the x position is six, y is 30, then label should be text, color should be red, is just should be one plus team uh, black and white. So once we do that, uh, we can see that I think X position was six. So this is six here. We can see that we have placed the text at that position. And Y position is around 30. So this is 30. So this is the text in which we have placed. We say the color of the text should be red, which shows the relationship between car. And from the text in which we create, I think, we say text is space, they were using space function, uh, uh, the relationship of car weight and mileage appears to be roughly linear. So they use the SEP argument. Within the SEP argument, they share forward slash N, which is going to specify that we want to introduce uh, a line break. But another way of doing the same thing we can use the str wrap function from the the str wrap function from the uh, from the string r package. So we can use str wrap just specify the line width. So it would we will still achieve uh, the same thing. So we can also add adding lines on the on the plot. So we can say 
we need to use Joom H line to add uh, horizontal lines. So in that case, we need to specify the Y intercept or Joom V line to add a vertical line. We need to add the specify the, the X intercept. So in this case, they say Joom H line, Y intercept should be mean of the highway uh, because mean city y we have it here mean of the highway which is mean of mpg dollar sign highway so we now say jump h line y intercept it should be mean of the highway uh color should be dark red uh line type should be dash then we still add some annotation on the plots which is text then within the text, we say minimum city, minimum highway plus one. Label is mean. Color should be dark red. Then we add the laps on the plot. So when we do this, we can see we have added H line, which is the horizontal line. This is the horizontal line. This is a main value. I think all these concepts are they are very useful. They are uh, very useful. It makes uh, the message in which we are trying to pass uh, across uh, to our audience to be very easy because they can easily uh, go through the plots and understand the message in which uh, you are trying to pass across uh, to them. Uh, we, but in some instances, we might want to highlight uh, uh, specific points uh, on the graph. So in that case, uh, we can use another package that is very useful, uh, which is uh, which is the the GG, which is the GG GG highlights package. So how does this package work? So library ggplot2, GG highlights. So we have ggplots. We pass in the data. We do our mapping. We say jump should be points. Color should be red. Uh, we say size should be two. Then we now say GG highlights. We say class is equals to what? Mid size. So it's just going to highlight uh, mid size where we have mid size. So you can see that it highlights those points as red. So we can see where we have mid size. And this is very, very uh, useful. So in this case, we are doing the same thing. We say GG plot, we pass in the data, aesthetics. Uh, John bar field should be red. Then we say plus GG highlights. Then we say class should call equals to what mid size. So it's still going to do the same thing. It's just going to highlight uh, mid size for us. But if we say class is equals to a vector of mid size, mid size and pickup. So it's just going to highlight those two bars for us. It's going to highlight them red for those two bars, which is very useful. And it makes uh, the message in which we are passing across very easy for our audience uh, to follow along. So what about uh, the teams? So the teams is very useful uh, in customizing the non-data related components of our, of our graph. So, so we are looking at altering the team uh, elements in the graph. So how do we do that? So we have a data which is coming from the uh, salaries from the car data package. So we do our our mapping, passing the salaries data. We do our mapping. We say it should be Jumba, facet wrap by discipline. We pass in the labs. So when we pass in P, when we render the plots, uh, this is uh, what we have. So, so for the team now, we just say P uh, plus team. Then we say all the text should be element text. The color should be navy. Then the panel dot background, the panel background. Uh, how do we adjust that? We say it should be rectangle. Then we say fill should be white. Then the grid panel dot grid dot major this is going to control uh the grid lines uh is going to control the grid lines that we we are seeing on the graph so here we are using element line color should be gray uh the minor grid line we are also using element line color should be gray 
and line type should be dash. Uh, so we can see the line type is dash for the minor grid line, but for the major grid line, we have removed the line type there. Uh, we also have panel.grid.measure.x. We are using an element blank to turn it on, off. We also turn the minor grid line off, then strip dot background should be element rect to control the for the strip. Then we say fill should be white, then color should be gray. So once we render that, we can see that uh, this nice uh, looking uh, visualization, which is based on the, uh, uh, the team in which we have passed, other arguments in which we have passing. But they also talk about uh, for the team, we can further customize uh, uh, the team of ggplot2 uh, using this ggteamassist package. Uh, and how this package works is that we just need to highlight the plots in which we are working on. So once we have this plot highlighted, we just click on the add-in we look for GG team assist and click on it. Then it's going to bring, uh, it's going to pop up. Let's see how that works. The it's just going to pop up. Let's go back to our studio. And this is the book. What's this here? Library. Okay, so we have that. So what I need to do, I just need to highlight this plot. Control Shift P, GG Team Assist. So I just, we just need to click on it, and it will launch. Oh, sorry. GG team. Genesis. It will launch. I like the error message. <laughs> yes, the, it will launch. <laughs> uh, so once we do this, it's going to launch. It's going to launch. Uh, because I just installed, it's showing error message. So let me stop. Yes, don't save. Oh. I'm sorry. So once we launch it, it's just going to it's just going to show us, it's just going to show us, uh, but I do not know which error message it was trying to show me there. Let me check. Okay, let me check again. Launch this, launch this. Okay. Oh, that was the one. Oh, like, sorry, no sorry. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's amusing though. It's like no GG plot two object has been selected for someone else. No, because yeah. I also select line twelve, which is a oh, GG okay. plot two object. That is why I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's just going to give us this, but the GG is still failing. I don't know why it's giving one in here. Start PNG, drop plot, okay. Graph SPI mismatch, so just leave. So we, for the field color, we can just pick any number value for the panel background, grid major, grid minor, so we we'll just keep on clicking. This is 
This customization is for the panel and background. Then this is for the settings. We specify the setting. This is for the axis, which will axis text, axis text X, axis text Y, axis line. This is for the axis ticks, then title and label. So this is where we are going to change all. You can see we have axis, X axis label is rank, or we can change it here. And this one will be for the legends. Uh, this is for the subtitle and caption. So whatever our values in which we are passing in with this digit team assist is that at the end, once we click on done, it's going to send everything back to the our our studio uh, console. It's going to send the final output back, and it's digit, we we'll just need to just rerun the code, and that's all. So I think that is also very useful way of customizing uh, the team uh, in our graphics because, uh, and it's very useful to customize all the teams in which we have using this uh, GG uh, plot to team, GG team assist. It's a very good uh, uh, package. So there are some other, Prepackaged teams in which uh, they do specify, like the the GT team package. We come with team base, team CAC, team economics, team Excel. So there's, but we can also create our own team, just like example they did here. Uh, they did uh, uh, the visualization. They add some labels. Uh, they just call P which is going to give us this plot. So when they load the GG teams, they say P plus team economics, uh, which is also going to give us the economics uh, team based on the customization. Uh, we can also use team 538. Uh, this is for team 538. Uh, we can also use team uh, WSJ with passing the base size to be, to be eight. Okay. There's also the HRBR team package. So, so this uh, package also has its own uh, team. We can uh, use team Ipsum. So when we use team Ipsum, it's going to give us this team or we can use uh, GG team R package, uh, which has some other very useful team uh, in which we can use uh, to customize our team. Then if we are using team GT team I reset, this is going to reset the team and it's going to go back uh, to the default uh, team of uh, ggplot2. I think uh, that's, that is all uh, that was in the, in the book, the chapter. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Yeah, like as you were going through, I'm like on my GitHub saving some of these, like looking for the repos for these, like the um, like the palettes and then also these themes because like this is totally like especially the modifying for the themes. These are like super new to me, so I'm really excited to try this all out. Yeah. Okay, so I think I will stop sharing. Yep. Okay, yeah, so thank you so much, Femi, for um, doing the presentation today. Like, it was awesome, and like, this was a super interesting chapter. So we'll be meeting up again next week, which will be Sunday, June 11th, and I have on the schedule that Tiffany will be going over chapter 11 and 12, which is saving graphs and interactive graphs. So I'll see you all next week. And thank you so much for joining. And have a great day. Yeah, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.